Hi, everyone. It's amazing how everybody who goes live has to start with the same script. Am I live? Can you hear me? Can you see me? How many of you have been uh, working odd hours? Let's start with that. How many of you have been working odd hours on uh, during your lockdown? Because I was having a chat with someone this morning and they said uh, that there was no difference between their night and their day anymore. And uh, there was no structure to their meetings anymore. There was... Um, there was everything as is, when is kind of thing, or as and when possible. Okay, so today's topic is finding win-win solutions. So let's have a quick feedback on what we understand by a win-win solution. Um, so here's my definition of a win-win solution. Uh, a win-win is usually a solution that benefits both or all parties equally, where we're not gaining or one is not gaining at the cost of the other. So in an ideal win-win situation, you would want the other person to go away with the feeling that they have gained a lot out of whatever agreement has been come to, and you have gained as well. And the uh, indicator for this is that both end up feeling good and satisfied with what has been decided or arrived at. That's what a win-win solution as by definition is. So, The uh, reason for this topic was that many of you came back and said, you know, we're going through all of this right now. Uh, obviously, our jobs are going to evolve. Our hospitality and hotel business is going to evolve. So, you know, what do we need to do to arrive at win-win solutions? And uh, what I would like to share to that is a couple of things. So the first thing that I would like to ask whoever is watching is uh, let's say that I have a problem, okay? And just for example sake and for you know discussion sake, my problem is black. So I have a problem and this problem is black. What should my solution be? Give me your thoughts, give me your feedback, give me your advice. What would you advise me? What should my solution be if the problem is black? Do comment, otherwise I won't know what your responses are because unlike a Zoom call, this is a one-way street. You can see me and hear me, but the only way I can hear from you is when you comment. How many of you said the solution should be white if the problem is black. How many say that the solution is white? Now I'm going to repeat my question till I get some answers to that. I have a problem to which I need a solution. And for example's sake, I'm saying my problem is black. What should my solution be? So in the past, when I asked people this question, I got loads of replies. So those of you who are shy to share your thoughts, I will share the thoughts of other people. So about 80% of the people said that the solution should be white if the problem is black. About 10% of the people said if the problem is black, avoid black. And about 10% of the people said, if the problem is black, then the solution could be any other color. So now, so those of you who were shy to give in your responses, tell me, 
which of the three categories you fall into the first one the second one or the third one Romel, you don't think black is a problem, but I do, and I'm asking for solutions and suggestions. <laughs> it's just about thinking. It's just a way of thinking. So when we're looking at win-win solutions, we want to start by focusing on how we think about the problem, exactly like what you're saying, Romel, because you don't think black is a problem, so you may not have a solution for me. But if I have black as the problem, then I'm looking for a solution. Okay, so coming back, how many of you thought the solution should be white? Pick blue, okay. How many of you thought the solution should be avoid black? And how many of you thought that the solution could be any other color? So I'm going to go now stretch it further and say, my philosophy, yes, exactly, Roman. let's talk about what color could be a solution. My philosophy says that the solution to my problem could be anything which is not black. And that could lie in a color that we don't even have a name for, for that matter. Yeah. So when we start expanding our mind about how we perceive a problem, we're able to find more options to create win-win solutions. Hey, Jose, nice to have you here. By the way, guys, Jose is my big inspiration, okay? He's the one who's been like pushing me to be live and on videos. And uh, I wouldn't have done this if he hadn't encouraged me. So thank you for that. So we're coming back to problems and solutions. So we're saying a solution lies in anything that is not problem. Okay. Now we're taking it to the next step and saying, so how, what is a win-win solution? So win-win is where both or all parties to a situation are equally benefiting out of that solution. Yeah. Agree, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Jose. So everybody agree that a win-win is where both or all parties to that transaction or negotiation or scenario are benefiting equally. Okay. So I'm going to give you a story on uh, this. I heard this on my my leadership group by my mentor, okay, the one that I am being mentored on. And um, it was very interesting. And this all this discussion happened when the lockdown was just announced in the UK and business owners and small business owners were really struggling and did not know what to do because people knew their incomes were hit and people knew that they were not going to, you know, get any cash coming in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there was one particular man who was super stressed in that forum, in that community, who came up and asked the question. He said he was um, he, he had an ice cream man business. So I know people in India, we haven't seen ice cream vans, but over here in the UK, they're very common. And the ones who visited the UK have seen the ice cream vans, right? So you have people driving these vans and then, you know, going into different popular locations and vending ice creams to the public. So now given the lockdown, this man had to stop that because he was not allowed to drive around selling ice creams in public locations. And he was super stressed with this problem because he was not going to get any business, not going to get any income and didn't know what to do. So he threw that question to our mentor uh, asking for a solution. And it was very interesting what she said. She said, you can resolve a problem by looking at a win-win in two, in two or three steps, okay? So step one is you can't sell ice creams. So that's a problem. Step two is you need cash coming in. So that is a solution you need to find. 
And the three, third thing is, what are the resources that you have with you to be able to do something new, to be able to do something different? So the guy said the resources he had available with him was his ice cream van. And that's all. That was his asset. That was his business asset. And that's it. So the next step was, what is the problem that more people are facing? You know, And with that delivery van, could he resolve a problem that other people were facing? So other people were facing problems of not having enough produce at the time when the lockdown was just announced. The supermarkets went completely mental here. People went crazy overstocking. So there was shortage of goods in supermarkets, which became a bigger problem for the rest of the population. So, so the idea was using his delivery van, could he resolve a problem that was already also taking place for other people? which means there was shortage of food supplies and um, you know, goods, toilet rolls especially. So could he, as somebody with a delivery van, resolve that problem? And the answer was yes. So which means he would then have to go farm shops, source fresh goods from farmers, and go to places that were popular and sell fruits and vegetables and essential supplies that people would like to have, which were not available in the supermarket for various reasons. And and that gave him an idea to create a win-win solution because then he had to change, he changed his business plan for that time. So it's just selling ice creams. He started sourcing goods from farm shops and he started vending them in different places where he was allowed to vend fruits and vegetables, which which the government had still given um, allowances for. So he actually created a win-win solution where he was generating income for himself, and he was also resolving a problem for somebody else. So the problems that he resolved were two. One is people didn't have to queue up for the supermarkets to get their fruits and vegetables, because what was happening is they were queuing up, And by the time they got into the supermarkets, the supplies were run out. So it was actually a, you know, a lose-lose situation for most customers. But when he started getting stuff from farm shops, so farmers were struggling because they couldn't sell all of their produce. So this man resolved the situation by picking up stuff from farms, going to key locations where fruits and vegetables were allowed to be sold and selling differently now. So we're really trying to look at how we can expand our thinking in our hotel business, in our industry, to create new stuff that will, um, that will serve the new behaviors that we're expecting people to come up with. And, and that's what it, this is about. You know, most, most people at the moment are just scared that you know, we're going to have to drop prices for our hotels or we're going to have to, uh, you know, start fighting for, you know, market share or we're going to have to just compete with other hotels and we're not going to get enough revenue. Um, but how can we do something differently? And there was some some other guy who was interviewed on BBC this morning, which was quite interesting. He um, is in the hotel business and he runs a spa hotel and he made a, a very nice statement in just one one line. He said that as as a hotelier, as a spa owner, I need to reinvent by creating new experiences that are going to accommodate new behaviors. So while we may still have our hotels, we still have our products, we're going to have to reinvent by creating new experiences. And that's how we're going to be able to build win-win solutions which will also be sustainable. So these were very two interesting examples that I thought I would like to share, even though they belong to other industries. Uh, the second one is hotel industry, but the first one was you know, an ice cream man seller. But how can we apply his model into our businesses, into our hotel businesses to create something new? Because without creating something new, we're not going to be able to go past this situation. We're not going to be able to go further from where we are right now. 
So I wanted to share this and give me give me your feedback, comments of what you think about it and what your ideas are to create a win-win for your business. Because I know a lot of you are in the hotel industry, but in different parts of the industry, in different areas of or different departments. So what would you do differently? How would you how would you bring about a win-win situation, a win-win solution for yourself? So I'm gonna okay. Let me add one more thing since Jose is here and Jose, if that's okay, I can uh, can I share this, Jose, if it's all right. So Jose is uh, for the rest of you guys to know. Jose is a TEDx speaker and a communications expert, and uh, about. Five, six months ago, Jose and I decided we would collaborate and bring in um, some new elements on communication and public speaking for the hotel industry. And unfortunately for all of us, you know, we were hit by COVID and uh, we haven't been able to build on what Jose and I were discussing at the time. And for both his business as well as mine, we had no choice but to say how are we going to reinvent and that's when we decided to go online because there was no concept of at the time we didn't have a concept of you know doing excellence training and success training and communication training other than a face-to-face -face and a live environment so so jose and i figured out a win-win that he was still going to build his business online and I was going to build my business online because we could not build our program together given this crazy scenario. So Romil says what each of us need to do would be to look at our resources and see what we can use them for to provide a potential solution for existing customers and absolutely Romil. Um, and uh, and those resources that we have, uh, some of them we do take for granted or some of those resources we do think about as, or we don't give them as much importance as we should. So the ice cream man guy never thought about his ice cream van as a real powerful resource for himself. Yes, he thought about it as a dependency, as a livelihood, as something that he needs, but he didn't think about it as a resource that can be potentially be used and you know applied to a different result so so that's one of the things that we need to look at in ourselves is you know the resources that we have uh, especially the ones that we take for granted or the ones that we haven't paid too much attention to like in my case i've had this resource of you know my facebook community and i've actually never really uh, you know reached out to them until now in the recent weeks so that's where i'm reinventing myself and i'm saying yes my facebook community is a resource and i'm reaching out to them i'm also providing what i know i'm sharing i'm contributing and hoping that there is um, a mutual benefit or a win win from there but guys feel free sh to share this with your your hotel colleagues yeah the more the merrier of course So coming back, okay, just let me recap these three steps that I noted down. So, so step one, when we're trying to look for a solution is, let's just step back and think about how we're thinking about the problem. What, what is our mindset about the problem in the first place? You know, is, is the problem overwhelming us? Is the problem challenging us? Is the problem pushing us to find something new? Uh, reinvent ourselves where are we on that you know what is our mindset about that problem the second step is what are the resources like Roman said what are the resources we already have that we can utilize and how can we and the third point is how do we resolve a problem that somebody else is also experiencing using our resources so that we can have a mutual win benefit and a win-win for both sides yeah three steps how we're thinking about the problem 
um, what are the resources that we have and what is the problem that we can resolve for somebody else using our resources. So I, I like to do everything in three steps, you know, because three is a good number. It's two is too small and four becomes too much. So three steps is good when we work on anything. Okay. So I'm going to leave you guys with these three essential pointers. Uh, give it a go. Give it a try. Um, use use these three pointers to, you know, in, in something that you're facing right now as a problem. Not the world problem, but maybe something specific that you are trying to break through from and get ahead. And apply it and see what answers come up. You will for sure find something new that you can do and work with. And yeah, come back, give me feedback, send me a message, text, whatever, in terms of how it worked out, because that would help to know that the model works. And uh, I am going to now leave you guys with that. And I'm going to go out and get some sunshine today. Need some very badly. So I look forward to seeing you guys for the next one, which will possibly be middle of next week. Okay, guys. So I shall see you. Have a wonderful Saturday. And ciao, ciao.